guys, this is Production Music Live with a quick update. Ableton just released version 9.5 of Live and we're going to have a look at the features. So I'm switching into session view of our Saji template over here. And as we are playing the main part, we see one new change. We can see the meters show peak and RMS values right now. So it's easier to control the dynamics of individual tracks and the overall mix. Um, but there are other new features as well. For example, the filters got a big update and those filters are being used in the auto filter and inside of the operator, the sampler and the simpler device. Let's quickly load an auto filter onto the master channel over here. And you can see the interface changed slightly. I'm going to move down the, the volume, the overall volume on this utility now, for now. And we are going to have a look at the new filter shapes over here. You can see there are a couple of new ones. And now we also have the option to toggle between the filter slopes, 12 and 24 decibels. So let's play it again. There are two major new features. One is select different kinds of filters and the second one is morph between filters, which is pretty cool as well. So let's look at morphing first. I'm selecting morphing over here and we see there's a new button over here or a new knob and we can now morph towards getting a band pass filter to getting a high pass filter like this, we get a high pass filter. If we go on, we are getting a notch filter and back to the low pass filter. So this is one movement from zero to 100, back from low pass to notch, to high pass, to band pass and to low pass. Pretty cool, sounds pretty awesome once you've put that in your mix, let's listen. So that's a pretty cool new feature, especially for live mode. And we are going to look at some of the other filters. Let's select um, a high pass filter and have a look at OSR, MS2, SMP and PRD. Those filters are basically included from the drop from Cytomic and they're now available in Ableton as well. And they sound pretty cool. So let's go to OSR. Instantly, we see there's a new knob over here for the drive, which adds in some sustain and drive into the sound of the filter. So if you're asking yourself, so what's the difference between MS2, SMP and so on, you can go to the Cytomic website and check out the um, analog modeling behind all those filters. Um, for now, we are happy with those new features and they give a lot of space for creativity. And let's have a look at 
if we just open up a new MIDI track over here and we load in the simpler, for example, we can see it has a new interface and it also features those filter options now. You can go here and select all those filter types as well. Um, same is true for the sampler and the operator. For example, if we go to the operator, we can now select those filter types over here as well. And they sound pretty cool on the operator too. For example, the OSR gives a nice growly feel to it. But for now, we are going to look at some other new features. I just recorded a drum sample out of uh, the song template that we have running in the back. And the recorded audio looks like this right now. So if we have a look inside the details of the waveform, we can see they got more detailed. So they did a little bit of work over here and it looks a lot nicer and exact right now. This is one new feature, but the really big new feature is um, the simpler device. So if we place a new simpler onto this new MIDI track over here, and we just load this loop inside of this um, MIDI track, simpler we see simpler looks a lot different now we can even toggle a breakout window so we have simpler here and you can see we now have three different views classic one shot and slice we also have those nicely analog model filters inside down here now that we just put a drum loop inside of this simpler device we can go to slice mode and we can see the drum loops being sliced up. Now we can use the computer keyboard, for example, or a MIDI keyboard to play different slices of this drum loop. So if I hit my computer keyboard now at C3, we are playing. This is pretty cool. And you can see there are a couple of options over here. We have a warping mode. It's automatically warped. We have our known warping algorithms over here, so beats, tones, texture, re-pitch, complex, complex pro. And we have this sensitivity knob over here. This one shows us how many slices are going to be made. So you see those orange little pieces over here. Life just divided this sample into many slices and with the sensitivity halfway, we're getting less slices. 75 getting those important slices over here we have trigger and gate mode trigger basically plays the sample even if you just hit the note very quickly it will play the entire selected sample or in the slice mode the slice we selected if we put it to gate mode it will only play as long as we hold the note I put down the sensitivity, it gets more obvious what trigger and gate are actually doing. So I'm going back to trigger mode and sensitivity is down to 0%. So we are slicing nothing. We are playing the entire sample and I'm playing, I'm hitting the root note on my keyboard. I already stopped hitting the note. I just quickly hit the note and it will play the entire sample. If I go to gate mode, we will just play as long as I'm holding the note. You can also adjust the fade in and fade out, for example. If we go here, fade in time adjusted a little bit. Sometimes necessary for samples with a high attack or transient, you don't want to play. And you also have fade out over here. So you also have those pitching options. And then you can see we have several playback modes over here. For example, mono, poly, and through. Mono will play one slice at a time if we are slicing. With um, poly, you can play several. For example, I could hit both notes at the same time. And through, 
plays a sample to the end until you play another slice. So those are the big news in slice mode. If we go to uh, classic mode now, this first mode over here, classic mode, in classic mode, we are simply playing back the sample we loaded in. It's will it will be looped and then it starts again. So you can also shorten our sample like this, for example. Samples will be automatically warped over here with one of the warp modes. If you play higher pitches, the sample will sp still be the same length since it's just pitched up but warped. As long as it's warped, it's, it won't be getting shorter if you pitch up or longer if you pitch down. If we remove the warp, it will be shorter. You can also play more than one voices or you can select how many voices you want to play with a sample. This may be more interesting if you're recording a pad sound or a piano or something. In one shot mode, we can basically load in a sample and play it from the start to the end. The faders can be adjusted as well, like fade in. And fade out as well. The great thing is also you can apply all those new filters inside of the simpler device now so the simpler device has gotten a lot more powerful compared to the previous version of Ableton and also the operator and the sampler and the author filter are benefiting massively from this improvement. They also released a new version of Push and, as mentioned before, a couple of new sound libraries if you already own Ableton Suite. Also, Ableton improved waveforms. They are more detailed now. Um, the coloring got a little better. They also have new Max for Life essentials, but we are not going to cover those since they're pretty advanced for now. As well as there's now a link option, which kind of MIDI clocks several devices that are connected via Wi-Fi. So together with the new analog model filters, this update looks really nice and we are going to enjoy those filter shapes a lot from now on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check the description for templates and drum samples used in this video. Subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.